Today, AWS controls more than one third of all the cloud computing that happens in the world. That means almost every other business or website that you interact with, one out of three is actually under AWS cloud system. But it looks like everything is going to change and it's going to happen very soon. Hi. My name is Pranav and I run this channel with Kritika, hence the name Programmer Cup. I've been in the tech industry for almost 11 years and out of that 6 years I've been working here in Canada from startups to big companies. And I want to share my experience of learning a cloud technology myself, using cloud on an almost day to day basis and then checking what the stats are, what the data is and what the facts are. Now if you have been following our channel before, you might already know that I recently became a Google Cloud Digital Leader and right now I'm preparing for the next certification. And I've talked about this before, so I won't spend a lot of time on this. I don't think certifications are the only way to learn, but for someone like me who is just learning these on the side, certifications do provide a good path to first of all learn something and then also test myself on the same. And in the end, if some companies value that certification, that's just a cherry on top of the cake for me. But if you want to learn more about that, go check out this video. Now, a lot of people ask me why did I actually choose to learn Google Cloud when AWS is the most valuable and the most famous cloud technology available today. One of the big reasons was I was seeing that everyone and their dogs was getting an AWS certification. If I open my LinkedIn today, almost every other person I follow is working on AWS or has a certification of some kind. Now I do want to thank Jeff Bezos, Amazon and all the great work they did to actually bring cloud computing as a field. I do think that there are a lot of disadvantages today if you are a fresher and newbie learning cloud computing. I'll also share my experience as a user. I have used both AWS and Google Cloud for my own use as well as for professional use in the job I was working for. And I can tell you, AWS is not designed in a user-friendly way. It is super complicated to understand and when you enter the interface, you are actually lost for a while. On the other hand, my experience with Google Cloud was way easier, way simpler and actually it gave me tutorials, videos and everything else to get started. I never actually got stuck using Google Cloud. And I'm not even talking about the pricing and all the other features that Google Cloud or AWS can compare each other on. I'm just talking about really my user experience to get started as a newbie. And I think cloud computing has just begun. According to estimates, cloud computing would reach almost $1 trillion value by 2026. That is a many times multiple from where we are today. And that means this is a perfect opportunity for anyone to start learning and get into cloud computing. I do not encourage anyone to become a cloud engineer just for the sake of becoming a cloud engineer. I really think even if you are an app developer or a full stack web developer or just a front end engineer, doesn't really matter. If you don't know how to deploy your application, if you don't know how to have uh, an authentication, some kind of database link to your application, I would not really call you an engineer because especially if you're a student or someone with not a lot of experience, if you cannot showcase the websites you have built, well, people who are using WordPress or Wix could make more beautiful websites than you or could make beautiful apps than you. So what's the difference? How would you call yourself an engineer if you cannot do basic database management or if you cannot deploy your website on a cloud and then show it to everyone. I think it's really important today. Now this was my experience and my opinion. Let's now get into facts and see why Google Cloud might become the biggest cloud computing provider. Here you can clearly see where the most Google Cloud customers are. Yes, most of the users according to this graph are currently in North America for Google Cloud, but I do think Asia is a big market and I do think India will play a big role in actually using Google Cloud more and more. And the next one, growth of GCP consumer base since 2023 is the one that really got me excited because we can see that most startups today are actually going for Google Cloud. That means yes, AWS, more established companies are using it more because a lot of times they have lock-in periods. They lock you in for three years, five years or nine years and for a big company who's already developed and has all their things working on AWS, it is not that easy to transition into a different cloud. And for what? Why would they even do that? to save a couple million dollars or have a little more efficiency? Well, AWS is not bad in that sense. AWS is one of the greatest cloud technologies present. It Once you get used to it, once you go through the initial learning hurdles, 
every cloud computing is pretty much the same. I cannot even say that AWS is more efficient or most cost effective than Google, to be honest. But most new companies are choosing to go with Google Cloud. And these new companies eventually will become multi-billion dollar companies and will be listed in all the stock market and will have the most control of the world, I guess. Um, <laughs> So in the end, it also becomes a choice of learning a technology that's already established like AWS, but there's a lot of competition or learning something new where a lot of growth might still be possible. And this is no surprise either. We can see that Google Cloud's customer base by industry, media is the largest that they have. Why would you ask? They have YouTube. They have the largest amount of data present in anywhere in the world. So they do know how to save large media files and then efficiently load them and have authentication around it and have metadata around it. For example, if you're watching this YouTube video, this is probably coming from a Google Cloud storage. Then there would be a metadata. For example, this video of ID1 would be stored somewhere else where there would be number of likes, who owns this video, who can edit this video. So that's the ownership and authentication part. What are the comments on this video? What's the description, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which all comes in metadata. So Google already has built a lot of trust in that aspect. Now, multi-cloud strategy also really helps Google Cloud. Now, what is multi-cloud? Multi-cloud is when a company is using more than one cloud providers. Most companies today use AWS, but if they want to add another cloud just for safety or just having an option in the company, which one do you think they're going for? They only have two options, which is Microsoft Azure or Google Cloud. Even if companies start choosing one or the other, doesn't really matter. AWS is losing market share slowly. So we already talked about the ease of usage as well as the growing trends. Now, what if you're just interested in learning how much money you could make becoming either a cloud engineer or having a software engineering background, but being an expert in at least one of the clouds. As you can see with a lot of these surveys done, people who are an expert in AWS or Microsoft have an average salary of $133,000 worldwide. Whereas for Google cloud engineers, it looks like the salaries range more around 150,000. Now, why do we have about this? Now, why do we have about 20% salary difference? Well, the biggest reason is most developers today know AWS. So when you apply for an AWS related job, you would be competing with thousands of other developers, which would not only make your chances of getting the job a bit slimmer, but also would allow the company to charge a bit less because there's so much competition. They would be able to find a perfect candidate who is not only good at his or her craft, but also is in maybe need of money or doesn't value how much they should be earning right now. Now I'll also link to this document down in the description below so that you could have an idea and see for yourself what certification you can do to get what kind of salary ranges. Now let's get more technical because in the end, all of us are here engineers or aspiring to be one. I will show you what features AWS exactly offered to become one of the biggest cloud providers and then what Google Cloud is doing to actually be a better choice today, especially in the AI revolution that's happening all over the world. Both GCP and AWS provide us with an IAM system, which is called Identity and Access Management. Now, why is this useful? Now, this is super useful because within your own company, you don't want to give the same kind of access to every developer and every team. Both of them have a lot of storage that you can use. Both of them have serverless functions, which is called Lambda functions or cloud functions. So what's the big difference? One of the biggest advantages of Google Cloud is that they have BigQuery. If you have an application that has a lot of data, BigQuery is the best way to get most data analytics done today. In terms of customer support, Google Cloud does offer 24 seven live chat as well as email support, whereas AWS only has email support. So that means if a company is struggling and wants some help or have some issues, they might need to wait four to 12 hours just to get a reply from Amazon. And then every email would take more time and more time to get respond. But Google has a chat system, which companies really like. Apart from that, Google Cloud also has superior database qualities. Now GCP does provide a cloud SQL system, which a lot of companies and a lot of developers are used to. On the other hand, Amazon has DynamoDB, which is super nice, but it's something that there is again a learning curve that comes with it. And according to experts, if you are looking for a powerful and fully managed relational database solution, GCP is the way to go.
Now let's talk about cloud storage. Now one of the key features of Amazon is that it has a service called DynamoDB inside which you could store your files and I think up to 10 GBs they also offer automatic indexing which is pretty amazing. Now even here, now even here Google Cloud would win again. Why? Because cloud data stored from Google not only provide automatic indexing but also allows for ASIC transactions making it a better choice than Amazon's DB. Now I use Firebase a lot and Firebase is just one of the small features provided by Google Cloud. And the beauty is Firebase itself comes with deployment, databases, authentication, cloud storage and many other features that I don't even remember to tell you right now. If you have been following our channel before, you know that I use Firebase a lot almost for every other project because I can just focus on the front end and the back end would be handled by them. Now, no video is complete without talking about machine learning and AI. And yes, Google is still the leading one in that aspect. They have the most data and they have the most experience in leveraging those technologies. If you are someone who has been working with Python or have done any kind of data analysis, you would know that Google Cloud offers TensorFlow, Cloud AutoML and AI platform, making it the go-to platform for data scientists and developers. And when it comes to big data and analytics, they have again the best features, for example, BigQuery, Dataflow and Dataproc. We did not even talk about the great ecosystem Google offers. For example, you might be an Android developer or you might be an Angular developer or you might just be someone who wants to work with Google Workspace, Google Maps or Google Ads and all of these features have Google in front of them, which means they are all Google based systems, which means Linking them with your Google Cloud is very easy and integrations are actually recommended and supported in a great way. And if you have been using Docker or a system like Docker, you know that Google Cloud also offers Kubernetes as one of the features, which is actually the industry standard for container orchestration. I have made a small list and let's quickly go over all the features Google offers, which no other cloud platform is able to offer today. TensorFlow, Cloud AutoML, TPUs, Google Workspace, Google Maps, Google Ads, Kubernetes, open source tools, Angular, Android, Firebase, and a lot of others that I don't even have time to list right now. And in terms of sustainability, Google Cloud have pledged that they will become carbon neutral by 2030, which is another added benefit because that means it might not be the best technology just for learning perspective or getting a job or advancing in your career, but also might be the best for the environment. Now, if I haven't told you already, this video is not sponsored by any of the cloud providers. This is just my honest opinion after using these services. Now, let me just conclude by saying this. If you are someone who's already learning AWS or Microsoft Azure, you don't need to switch because I'm just a random guy on the internet and I'm just sharing my experience with you. Yes, I like Google Cloud more and I told you exactly why with data and personal experiences, but that doesn't mean that AWS is going anywhere. As an engineer, you should be able to learn any of the cloud technologies just so that you understand how the applications are deployed, how testing is automatically run, how authentication happens in the background, where are you storing things, what kind of databases do you use and things like that. They are the most important concepts. Doesn't really matter which cloud you use for a day to day purpose or for even opening your own company and starting a startup. If you do, by the way, let me know, I might be asking for a job. But jokes aside, the most important thing that you could take from this video is learning some kind of cloud technology. And if this video made any sense to you, maybe you would be focusing on Google Cloud more. But either way, I wish you the best of luck. I really hope that you could learn things for your own sake and enjoy the learning process as well. Thank you for watching this video and getting my... Now let... Let me know what cloud technologies you prefer and why Google Cloud is or is not the best technology to learn. I read all the comments on every video and if I don't, Kritika definitely does. With that said, thank you for your time again and see you next time.